Hello people and welcome to my review of X-Men Apocalypse. I'm your host, Tom Carter, Slacks Index Sonic. Right, I just want to get this off the bat and get it off my chest. This film was not that good. Oh my god, this film had so many problems. <laughs> And the Deadpool film was so promising earlier this year. Right, X-Men Apocalypse, it has a lot of problems. But it's not to say that it has some good stuff underneath it. You just have to peel away a lot of the crud to get to it. That's the big problem this film. The biggest problem I had with this film, as I felt, was watching this film. And even when I left the film as well, wow, that's probably the most underwhelming X-Men film I have ever watched. And... I'm not saying this is not a bad film, but I am going to start off with the cons and get it, that out of the way to explain why this film was not that good. When you're sitting there thinking to yourself, how much longer I've got this film, you start to wonder, what could I be doing instead? And this is the main problem in this film. There's so much stuff going on in this film. It's really, really mind-boggling how most of this stuff got in this and how much is so pointless. I'm not going to lie. I went, it was me, my girlfriend, and two of my mates, and we went to see this film, and it really, really bugged me that there was so much pointless crud in this film. It was unbelievable, and I say this much, like, me and my girlfriend, we love the bit with Wolverine coming out and slashing people up and basically being a badass and everything like that. That bit was so awesome, and she loved Hugh Jackman as well, so there you go who doesn't like Hugh Jackman he's like one of the most best looking men around I would have said no just saying but a lot of this stuff in this film was so pointless around about a third of the characters and subplots in this film were completely pointless you did not need this much stuff this film is two and nearly two and a half hours long and it felt it so much Right, I'm, before I continue, I'm just going to say this really, really quickly. Spoilers. Lots and lots of spoilers are going to be coming up in this review now. Right, the whole open this film was just bizarre. It's like, okay, you've got Apocalypse here. He's just like there. He's pretty much trying to get the powers transfer over to him. And when I was watching the beginning of this film, they're just trying to make it as violent and gory as possible for this type of film and it's just like I'm just thinking to myself watching this I'm like are you just trying to prove that you can do these little you want to get a little bit more violent you want to go a little more gory than Marvel can in places because you know Marvel trying to make a film that I don't know trying to appeal to everyone while your film trying to appeal to someone I haven't figured out who it's trying to appeal to but it's appealing for someone and apparently people seem to like this film also as well the characters in this film were so pointless. A lot of them are. Wolverine, pointless, didn't want to be there. Striker was pointless, didn't need to be there. Archangel, completely pointless and wasted, didn't need to be there. Um, Psylocke, completely wasted as well, just there to be um, an antagonist, to be honest. Also as well, Jubilee. It's like, she's in the beginning of the film and they actually use her and it's like, okay, no, we don't need you, bye. It's almost as if they are saying that, oh, okay, by the way, we've got a 90s X-Men film coming up, and yeah, she is a big part of the 90s X-Men, just, just a reminding people. And also, there was some very forced chemistry in this film as well. It's like, okay, Arc Archangel really want to go after Nightcrawler, so what do they do? They put him in a cage fight, at the very early on in the film, and all it is, it's like, okay, they're both going to go at each other, Nightcrawler damage him, but they have no other conflict talks or whatever, during the rest of the film, but that's supposed to be the reason why Archangel go Pacific after the Nightcrawler. It's almost like they cut bits out or they didn't bother to explain the subplot of that at all. They basically just thought there to try to give more reason and more depth. Also, another pointless character, um, Havoc. I know he was in um, First Class, but oh my god, Havoc. Oh my god, Havoc was one of these characters. It's like it was like he had potential, but they kill him off. He blows up in the mansion when he accidentally hits the um, the X Men jet and it blows up and kills him in the explosion. And Quicksilver didn't save him in time. Yeah, that Quicksilver bit, by the way, was actually kind of good. I'm not gonna lie about that. And also Storm as well. Oh my God, Storm. Um, pointless as well was there. 
had some character interaction, didn't have much to do apart from until the very beginning of the film, and then she didn't really do anything significant value until the end of the film when she decides what Apocalypse has been doing is wrong and sort of remember why she stands up and it's sort of established that she liked Mystique for what she did at, in the Washington thing at Days of Future Past and that was a thing and it's like yeah okay now she's part of the X-Men you know even though they, she was trying to kill him earlier on but you know it's like they're all friends now and she's part of the cool team because reasons and let's speak about characters Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. Oh boy. I really don't know what to think of him. There's some bits in this film which is like, okay, that's cool. That's really good. And then there's bits when you just watch and you're like, what on earth facial expression is he making? Why is he doing that? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? And also as well, I couldn't uh, stop imagining him as Isaac Ooze from the Power Ranger film. And it's like, oh my god, it's so it's so cringeworthy. It's like, with mean, the first time you actually see him wake up for the first time after God, after like how long he was asleep for, you know? And it's like he's looked like he's constipated, all like he's thirsty for water, all that. Basically, oh my god, it, it, it makes some weird facial expression. I couldn't stop laughing at. At Apocalypse in this film, he made some weird faces and stuff like that. And come to think of it, I don't even think they call him Apocalypse in the film either. I know they call him by his real name, but oh my god, I think I just realised that they didn't call him Apocalypse at least once. If they did, it probably wasn't a lot. So let's get into the story aspect of this and why I think there's some bad bits in the story. Right, the whole plot of the film is that Apocalypse, as I think my mate summed this up perfectly well. He touches the television, game all human knowledge, and then wants to eradicate the world of your humankind. Who does that remind you of, and what film does that rip off a little bit that came out not so long ago? Oh wait, Age of Ultron. That's literally, when he said that to me, my mate, I was like, oh my god, you are right. And the character Apocalypse, this character did not feel like Apocalypse. Yes, okay, they got some stuff right, and a lot of it is not correct and he looked shit as well he looked like a piece of plastic he looked like Ivan Ooze and he even acts like Ivan Ooze and it's like oh my god what am I watching here with him it's like Apocalypse had some really he had, he had a really good moment it's like the bit when him take control of Cerebro and Cerebro and I think I'm saying that completely wrong but fuck it I'm going to leave this and I can't be asked to edit this out but it's like when he when he launches all the missiles up into the air, controlling everyone's mind. I thought that was a beautiful visual image there. But a lot of it outside of that was such potential bullshit with him. And there were some really good moments with him, but a lot of it is just dragged down with the writing and with the visuals and stuff like that in places. And even if this film made it be on an apocalyptic scale with the basically he wanna eradicate every every human on the planet, he wanna make mutants the number one species out of everything apocalypse and it, with the story it's like okay, he wants to do this, this guy. He does it on a grand scale, but when he have see all this destruction, all this terror, yes there is destruction to terror in this film. It's like, I know a lot of people say, oh yeah, there's not that much for Apocalypse, for Apocalypse. It, it's, the weird thing is, it's that the, the substance there, I say this, the substance there, but it's not impactful. It's so underwhelming. It's like, you're sitting there like, okay, that's getting destroyed. Yep, the, 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 they're getting killed. Yep, that, that's getting destroyed. But it feels so underwhelming. It's like, this leaves no actual impact on me or anyone watching this, I feel personally. It's like, Okay, that's happening, that's happening, that's happening. And it's like, ah, it's not really connecting here, you know? It doesn't feel impactful. And once again, because Brian's seen back, there's some very weird design choices. And I thought the design choices for the characters and the costumes were a bit missay. But there's some cool bits and some nice looking things. But a lot of it felt rubbery or fell off and it just like it's not true to the source count and it's even more bad as well when we had Deadpool earlier this year back in February and it actually did a comic accurate X-Men film and it's like yes you can do this you just need to see people on the film that know what they're doing this film on the other hand it's like 
okay, this is what Brian Singer wants. Okay, let's do what Brian Singer wants. I'm not saying Brian Singer is a bad director. I'm just saying Brian Singer needs to get off the X Men project and actually give someone else a chance actually making the films instead. He's not a bad director. I just don't want him on the X Men films personally. I think he's done enough for it. He's been doing them almost for nearly 15 years now. And it's like, I'm getting sick tired of his vision. And it's like, this show, this film really, really showed it. And it really drags as well. And it's like, I don't want him on the project personally. I don't want to see him working on this. I don't. I think he's an overrated director, personally, to be honest. Yes, he made some really good film with U Unusual Suspect with X-Men 1 and 2, but outside of that, it's like, mm, give someone else another chance, please. I mean, because like, it's been proven. It's like, first class, you had a different director on it. You had um, the Deadpool film, a different director. And those are two films that you can look at and say, and say, yeah, those had different directors, they came out well, why don't we go in a different direction with a different visual narrative? Also, even the second X Wolverine film had a good director on it, and that came out good as well. Right, I think I bitch enough about the bads in this, and I'm probably going to think of more bads when I'm talking about the goods, so let's just get into the goods of this film. Right, things I liked. Right, I thought the shots, some of the shots in this film looked really, really good. It looked it looks pretty in places, but it has the problem that it's set in the eighties, but it doesn't feel like it in the eighties. A lot of knock on things to this film they're trying to force it that be the eighties, but you pretty much can put this in any time period. But yeah, again, I think this was the problem with um, First Class and Days of Future Past as well, which when you watch those films, it feels like yeah, you can almost put these films in these different time periods and they pretty much meld together because they're using technologies and looks and feels that pretty much modernize today and it really shows they're like it's very half-assed trying to make it look like the actual time period it came from it didn't feel like it was in the 80s at all and there you go i'm actually talking about the bad stuff again when i'm trying to compliment this film how typical with this film right the cast in this film right the cast that impressed me in this film the usual lot i thought general lawrence was very good i thought jane mcavoy was very good i thought michael fassbender was very good as well and the usual people that have been in the film as well um hugh jackman was all it was good even though he had no speaking dialogue he was pretty much slashing everyone it's pretty much what you've seen with wolverine you've seen it already you've, you've seen it a thousand times but I really liked the purse, the people who play Gene, Scott, and Nightcrawler in this film. They're really good in this film. I really like them, and I hope they do keep these actors, these actors and actresses around for these roles because they really did impress me. I wasn't expecting a really good performance from them, but they actually pull off, did the roles, and really did a good job as well. And I even thought the uh, Nicholas um, Hodlin. I think I'm saying that surname right because even though I get people constantly commenting on my video saying oh yeah got the names wrong sorry but he did a good job as beast and i really liked him and be fair i think beast was one of my favorite characters in the x-men franchise apart from wolverine to be honest quicksilver was very good as well i thought um evan peters did a really good job with quicksilver again he had the cockiness he had the one-liners and he was very quirky as well in the film and the other one that really surprised me as well was Jane McAvoy. He was very good. He had some really good lines and very delivery for comedic value. But yeah, again, I've seen him in doing comical stuff before. And he's actually very good. He's very quick wicked. So overall, I'm just going to give my final thought and my and my final score for this film. Right. Film overall, it has some very good visuals. It's editing nice in places. And it, acting was good. And there's some funny moments. And there's some impressive visuals in this film at some point and I thought the whole Quicksilver bit when he's saving him from the mansion was very good as well and the bits I didn't like in the film I thought the climax of the film when they fighting against the apocalypse was very unimpressive and also such potential bullshit as well we're basically the two pillars dropping making the X-Men symbol it's like yeah god there we go and it just, I said all my problems at the beginning, you know, and I just wasn't a big fan of it. And, oh yeah, I forgot to put this in, but I'm going to mention it here anyway. This, at the end of the film, we see the danger room, and they got sentinels. I thought all those sentinels were destroyed at the end of the film. I was speaking to Mitch about this, and Mitch said, oh, he didn't have a problem with it. Personally, I did have a problem with it. It's like, 
You want to get rid of these guys? These guys almost fuck up the timeline previously. Do you really want to keep these fuckers around to do it again or possibly create another bad timeline? Right, this film just infuriated me so much, but I'm just I'm just going to give it a score and I'll just leave it that. And um, the score I'm going to give this is literally going to be a 5 out of 10. And I know that's average, but this film is just so average. I did not enjoy it. It was... I say this, it's better than Batman v Superman by a mile. By a mile. It had potential stuff, but Batman v Superman was just potential garbage in that sense. And I've watched Batman v Superman again, and it is it's not good. It is a horrible film. And this film actually is better than that. I recommend if you're a diehard X-Men fan, go and see it. But if you're on the fence about it, don't waste your money on this film. It's not worth it at the end of the day. So, like I said, 5 out of 10. And also, if you'd like to check out more of my videos, check check out my YouTube channel, Index Sonic, on YouTube here. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Ta-ta. Hey guys, Armin here just reminding you that this video was made possible thanks to patrons. If you guys are interested in supporting us and making sure we keep the lights on, check out our Patreon where you can join other fans in supporting the CBC delivering content you guys have come to love and expect. And if you can't do that, give us a like and a subscribe, that goes a long way too.